Hey guys, it's off by one here, and today we're going to be solving clone graph. In this problem, we're given a reference of a node in a connected, undirected graph. So what does this part mean? It sounds confusing. So all that means is, let's say we have three nodes. One, oh, that should be a two, and then three. Well, a normal graph that's directed, you can have an arrow going to the two, and then an arrow going to the three. In an undirected graph, all it means is that the arrows are bidirectional, so you can go from three to two, or from two to three. And same thing over here, you can go from two to one, or one to two. And then all they want us to do in this problem is return a deep copy, which is basically just a clone of the graph. And here they tell us what the node class looks like, so we can just use that when writing our code. Here we have a picture that they gave us in the problem to explain what the difference is between different kinds of graphs you can return. So here's the original graph we're gonna get past. And let's say we just return node. So just return node. Then we're gonna get this result here where we just get the exact same one. As you can see, it's the same color and they're using that to represent that it's the exact same graph. And the second graph is what they want us to return. As you can see, the original one is yellow and this one is blue. So it's the exact same graph. We're connected to one, two, three, four, and same thing here, but it's stored in a different memory address. So for example, let's say this is stored in 0x1. Let's say that's the address. This one would be stored in 0x2, for example. And just to clarify, this would be stored in 0x1 as well, since it's the exact same graph. And then a problem with this graph is that the nodes are not correct. So as you can see, here we go 1, 2, 3, 4. And for this one, we go 1, 3, 2, and 4. And that's clearly not correct. So before I start shouting a solution at you, let me show you how the actual nodes are stored. So as you can see here, I have four node objects, and the way they work is, for example, let's say node here, the value is one. And let's say this is an address 0x1. Okay, cool. Well, the value is one, but the neighbors are gonna be nodes, not values. So this is actually pointing to this node, where the value is two. And this node here is stored in 0x2. And as you can see, we're also connected to three here, and we can say this is at 0x3, and then this 4 is connected here to 0x4. Okay, so now that we understand that this list right here is an object of nodes, then it'll be easier to understand how our code is going to work. And just to finish this off, this 4 is also connected to this node down here, and same thing for the rest of these that I didn't do. So the final graph would look something like this, where we have 1 connected to 2, and as you can see, 2 is also connected to 1 here. So we would draw an arrow both ways. And then 2 is connected to 3, as you can see from the neighbors list. Okay, well, what's 3 connected to? Well, 3 is connected to 2 and 4. So let's connect to 2, and then we have to draw the number 4 node here. And what is 4 connected to? 4 is connected to 1 and 3. Okay, so we draw an arrow pointing to 1 and 1 pointing to 3. And if you go back to node 1, you see that we have also node 4 here. So we would connect 1 to 4. And this whole graph here is what all of these nodes connected look like. And our goal is to take all of these nodes here and then just duplicate them. But not just duplicate them, we have to store them in completely different addresses. And that's not as hard as it sounds. So our copied node list would look like this. So instead of storing value 1 in the same exact address, we just store it in a different address. And I'm saying these are just 5, 6, 7, and 8, just to keep it simple. Obviously, the real addresses are much more complicated than that. And then the graph would look exactly the same. So we would have the 1, 2, 3, and 4 nodes all connected to each other, just like this. So now that we understand what the problem is asking us to do and how these graphs work, let's get into the solution. So to start, I've initialized the hash map here, and it's currently empty. What we're going to do with the hash map is keep track of the visited nodes from the original list and also store the copy we've made of it. So let's say we start at this node here with a value of 1. Well, what we want to do first is just copy this node here. So we're going to do a new node object and the value of it is going to be 1. And then we're going to have our neighbors, but our neighbors is going to be empty for now because we haven't gone through them. So before we go through the neighbors, we want to store this new copied node in our hash map. So we're going to have a copy of 1, and we're going to say we visited node 1 as well. So as you can see, the visited is orange, and the copy is going to be purple, just so it's easier to visualize. So now that we've created this new node here with a value of 1, 
we want to populate the neighbors. And as you can see here, the neighbors are two and four. So let's start by visiting two. Well, two is pointing to this node. It's not a value, if you remember that. So what we want to do now is visit this node two and create a copy of it. So we're gonna have node with a value of two and the neighbors list is going to be empty again because we haven't visited them. And before we go any further, we want to store the copy and we also want to store the original visited node. So that would be this two here. And now we want to do the same thing we did above where we visit each neighbor because we want to populate the neighbors here. So we're gonna start by visiting node one. Before we visit node one again and create a copy of it, we can check our hash map and see if we already visited it. Because if we did, then that means we already have a copy of it and we should just link them together. So for this example here, you can see that we already visited node one here because it's in our hash map. So we can just store one here. And this one, remember, is pointing to this node back here. It's not the actual value. And before going any further, I just want to draw the current graph out just so you can see what's happening. So we started by visiting node one. So we can just draw our node one here. And then you can see that we wanted to find its neighbors. So we created a node two. So node two is currently here. And as you can see, once we went through the neighbors, we saw that we already made a copy of it. So we could link node two back to node one. And that's currently what we have. Okay, so now we visited this neighbor here and we managed to connect the graph. So now let's go to the next neighbor, which is three. Well, currently we don't have a three in our hash map, so we can go visit it and mark it as visited. And before we do that, we wanna create a copy. So node with a value of three and the neighbors are going to be empty. So let's just mark it in our graph. Our copy is now created and we can mark the original node as visited. So now we're gonna have a node with the number three here with no connections yet. Okay, so now we're at node three and we want to visit his neighbors to be able to populate the neighbors over here. So we're gonna start by looking at the first neighbor, which is two. And if you look in our hash map, we already have a copy of two. So we can just write it in here which means that these two are connected, but only going that way for now. And now we look at the next neighbor, four. Well, as you can see, we don't have four in our hash map yet, so we're gonna have to create that. So node with a value of four, and the neighbors list is currently empty. So now we're gonna be at this node here. So now that we created a copy of it, we can mark it as visited. So our copy is going to be four, and our visited is also gonna be marked here, so four. And now we can draw a node over here with a value of four. Okay, so now that we're at this node now, we want to visit its neighbors so we can populate the neighbor list over here. And the first neighbor is one. Well, as you can see, we already visited one and we also have a copy of it. So we can return the copy and store it here. And now we go to the next neighbor, three. Three is also in the hash map, so we can just write it here as well. And now we're done with node four. So that's checked off. Our node four is complete. So now it has a direction going that way and a direction going this way. So now we go back to node three. Okay, well we made node four and it's actually in our hash map now, so we can store it here as well. So this means that node three is now connected to node four. So we're good there. And now we pop back up again. And for three, we're done as well because it's in our hash map. So now we can include this three here. And that means that two is now connected to three. And then at the very end, we go back to our original node of one and we visit the next neighbor. Well, actually before doing that, we store this now because it's in our hash map. So we can connect one to two, meaning that the arrow also goes that way now. And now we only have one more node to visit, which is four. And as you can see, four is in our hash map, so we can just store it in this neighbor's value. So now a whole graph is gonna be connected. So the algorithm we just discovered here is depth first search. What we're doing is visiting every node until we go to the last node. And once we go to the last node, we pop back up to the original node and just finish the graph from there. Our time complexity for this algorithm is going to be O of N plus M, where N is the number of nodes and M is the number of edges. So for example, this would be two edges. This would be one node. So hopefully that makes sense. We basically just have to iterate through all the nodes and neighbors, and that's what this means. Our space is going to be O of N because we have to store all of these new nodes here. So now we can get into the code. So to start, I want to take care of the base case where our node is empty. So if we have an empty graph, then we just want to return null. Okay, now that that's taken care of, we can just assume that a graph exists. 
and now we want to initialize our hash map and I'm going to call it visited nodes and here we're going to store our nodes and map them to our copy. From here we just want to define our DFS function so I'm going to do define DFS and we're going to be passing in our node and in here what do we want to do? Well like I said in the example the first thing we want to do is check if it's in our hash map so we do if node is in our hash map which is visited nodes then we want to return the visited node at the key node and this is going to return our copy which we can append to the new graph so from here if it's not in our hash set then we want to initialize it because that means we don't have a copy for it yet so I'm going to call this copy and set that equal to a node object with a value of node.val and the neighbors are going to be empty from here we want to put this in our hash map so we want to do visited nodes at the key node and set that equal to copy and then from here we just want to visit the neighbors so for neighbor in node.neighbors so all this is doing is visiting every neighbor in the current node we're at and then this is where our recursion comes in so we want to append to our neighbors array and what we want to do is call the function again so we're going to do DFS for the neighbor now since we're trying to visit all the way down to the last node and then pop back up and then once we finish that then that means we can return the copy so that's our whole function at the end we just want to return the call of the function and this should give us our final graph so let's see so as you can see this code is pretty efficient and now I'll go through the code manually So before I go over this code, I need to explain what's going to happen here. I'm not going to write all of the stuff I did before where I showed the node object. I'm just going to assume you understand that part and just kind of point to them here and keep track of our DFS function. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So first we want to check if the node is empty and we can see that it's not. We have a full graph here so we don't need to worry about this part. And now we want to initialize our hash map. So as you can see, the hash map is currently empty because that's how we initialize it. And the key is going to be our visited node and the value is going to be our copy node. So that's checked off for now. And now we want to do is return DFS for node. So let's say we're starting at this node here. Let's say we do DFS for that node one. Okay, so now we go into our DFS function with the node one and we check is this node in our visited nodes and we can see that it's empty so that's false so we don't worry about this for now so now we create a copy of the node so it's going to look like this where we just have the value of the node with no neighbors and now we want to add our copy to our hash map so we're going to insert it with the key of our node and we want to store our copy so it's going to look like this our copy is yellow and our original is blue and I guess this should also be blue technically since it's not our copy and now we want to iterate through every neighbor in the current node so we're looking at this node here one and we see that the neighbors are two and three so let's just start with two what do they want us to do well let's see copy dot neighbors dot append so that's telling us that we want to add a neighbor to our node and we're gonna call DFS for the neighbor and if we're, our neighbor is currently two then that means we want to do DFS for the node with a value of two and before going any further, I want to organize this a little bit. So I've written out the node value with the neighbor values that we're going to visit. And currently we are visiting neighbor two for node one. So let's see, now we're going to do DFS of node two. Is two in our visited nodes? Well, you can see that it's not. So we're going to make a copy of it. So we're going to make copy of two with no neighbors. And we're going to add the copy to our visited nodes with the key of the original node. So yellow is for our copy and blue is for our original okay now that that's stored we want to iterate through all the neighbors for two so we want to do copy.neighbors.append and then call dfs for the node one because that would be our first neighbor so we're going to do dfs for the node one okay so now we're running dfs for the node one and the first thing we do is check if the node is in visited nodes and we see that it is because right here we have visited one before and we have the copy here 
and what we're going to do is return the copy as you can see here. So now what that means is that for our two node we have this appended to it. So over here we can just draw the arrow that points to one. And now we can go to the next neighbor in two which would be three. So we're going to call DFS for three. And also now we can just cross out this DFS function since we already got what we needed from it. Okay so now we're visiting node 3 and we're doing the DFS for it. So let's see, DFS for node 3. Is our node in our hash map? No. So we want to create the copy of it. So we're going to create a node 3 with no neighbors and we want to add that to our hash map. So here's our copy and here's the original node. Okay, so now we want to iterate through every neighbor in the 3 node. So that's this node here and as you can see the neighbors are 1 and 2. So let's just start with 1 we would do DFS of one. So now we're visiting this node here, and let's see, is our node in our hash map? Yes, because we already visited it. So now we can just create a link between three and one, like this. Okay, so now this part is done, and this function call is also done. So now we're gonna look at the next neighbor of three, which is two, and call DFS for that. So we're gonna do DFS of two. So now we check. Is our current node in our visited nodes hash map? Yes, it's right here. So what we want to do is return the copy. So all that means is that we're gonna append two to the three neighbors. So now this part is done and this DFS call here is done as well. So now we pop back up to this DFS for our node three and we completed going through the neighbors. So now we just return this copy here. But what are we returning it to? Well, if you remember up here, we were calling the DFS for node two and you can see we visited the node three, but we never finished it. So now this copy is gonna be appended to two. So all that means is that two can now point to three and we're done with this call and we're done with this call as well. So now that we finished going through all the neighbors in two, we can return copy of that as well. And where is that going to? Well, let's go into our original DFS call of, for our node one. So now that just means that we can connect node one to node two here and now we're done visiting this node here and we can go to the next neighbor of one which is three so we're going to do one last DFS call for the node three. So now the DFS for two is done and all we have is DFS for three. So let's see is our node three in our hash map? Yes it's right here. So now all we have to do is return the copy. So all that means is one cannot be connected to three here and we're done with this call and we're also done with this call down here and now we can finally return our graph, which is this, and that's correct. If this video helped you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.